Knowledge check five. Under what circumstances would you apply a cluster correction? A, a study that randomly assigns schools to take part in a new behavioral intervention and analyze the effects on mean school suspension rates using school level data. B, a study that compared the effects on reading achievement for students of teachers who implemented a new reading curriculum to the effects on students whose teachers continued using the regular curriculum. The authors analyzed effects using a hierarchical linear model analysis with students nested within teachers. C, a study that randomly assigns students within each classroom to a new computer-based reading program or to a comparison group. The study measured student outcomes using a multiple regression analysis. D, none of the above. The correct answer is D. The WWC would apply a cluster adjustment only if there is a mismatch between the unit of assignment and unit of analysis, and the study does not make a cluster adjustment in its reported analysis. A, B, and C are incorrect answers. In choice A, the school is both the unit of assignment and the unit of analysis. In choice B, the authors account for clustering in their analysis. In choice C, students are both the unit of assignment and the unit of analysis. Knowledge Check 6. A QED study included 10 classrooms using computer-aided math instruction and 10 using the standard curriculum. No students joined the 20 classrooms during the school year. The authors reported classroom level means and standard deviations for a standardized math test at baseline and follow-up. At baseline, intervention and comparison group classrooms differed by 0.04 standard deviations. Which of the following is true? A. This study could meet WWC group design standards with reservations if the students are shown to be representative of their classrooms at baseline. B. This study does not meet WWC group design standards because a QED cannot demonstrate baseline equivalence using classroom level standard deviations. C. This study could meet WWC group design standards with reservations if the students are shown to be representative of their classrooms at baseline and at follow-up. The correct answer is C. The study is a cluster QED. To satisfy WWC standards for effects on individuals, a cluster QED must establish equivalence of the individuals in the analytic intervention and comparison groups. However, the study only provides classroom level standard deviations, so it is not possible to assess baseline equivalence of individuals. Moving to steps five to seven for the review to satisfy WWC standards for effects on clusters, a cluster QED must establish representativeness and baseline equivalence of clusters. The baseline difference of 0.04 standard deviations establishes baseline equivalence of clusters, as long as the authors can demonstrate that the sample is representative of the clusters at baseline. Therefore, the study can meet WWC group design standards with reservations, as long as the authors can demonstrate that the sample is representative of the clusters at both baseline and follow-up. Choice A is incorrect because the study must establish that students are representative of their classrooms at baseline and at follow-up in order to meet WWC group design standards with reservations. Choice B is incorrect because although cluster level standard deviations cannot be used to establish equivalence of individuals, they can be used to establish equivalence of clusters. Knowledge Check 7. A study examined the effect of an intervention on student achievement in classrooms by randomly assigning 10 classrooms with a total of 250 students at assignment to the intervention group and 10 classrooms with 210 students at assignment to the comparison group. One intervention group classroom with 21 students withdrew from the study after random assignment. The analytic sample consisted of 195 students who had been assigned to the intervention group and 185 students who had been assigned to the comparison group, for a total of 380 students. The study analyzed classroom level data. True or false, this study is a cluster RCT. This statement is true. 
The study is a cluster RCT because it assigned groups of individuals to conditions and the data are based on individuals within the groups. The clusters are classrooms. The outcome of interest is student achievement, which is measured for students within classrooms. The level of aggregation for the data used in the analysis does not affect whether the WWC considers the study to be eligible for review as a cluster study. What are the overall and differential cluster level attrition rates? A. Overall attrition is 5% and differential attrition is 10 percentage points. B. Overall attrition is 13% and differential attrition is 3 percentage points. C. Overall attrition is 17% and differential attrition is 10 percentage points. The correct answer is A. The unit of assignment is the classroom. For overall attrition, the study assigned 20 classrooms and 19 contributed outcome data. Thus, overall attrition is 20 minus 19 divided by 20, or 5%. For differential attrition, focus first on intervention group attrition, which is 10%, calculated by taking the result of 10 minus 9 divided by 10. Then focus on the comparison group attrition, which is 0 since no comparison classrooms left the sample. The differential attrition rate is the difference between the two, or 10 percentage points. B and C are incorrect answers. What numbers would the WWC use to calculate differential individual non-response? A. 1 of 10 intervention group classrooms left the study and 0 of 10 comparison group classrooms left. B. 55 of 250 intervention group students left the study and 25 of 210 comparison group students left. C. 34 of 229 intervention group students left the study and 25 of 210 comparison group students left. The correct answer is C. The study did not include any joiners, so it is acceptable to use data from the time of random assignment as the reference sample. Initially, the study assigned 250 students to the intervention group. However, 21 students were in a classroom that left the study. These 21 students are removed from the denominator of the intervention group calculation because individual non-response is calculated only within the remaining clusters. This means the denominator for the intervention group is the 229 students who were assigned to the intervention condition in remaining clusters, calculated by taking 250 and subtracting 21. The analytic sample included 195 of these students, so the numerator for the intervention group is 34, calculated as 229 minus 195. The denominator for the comparison group is the 210 students who were assigned to the comparison condition. The analytic sample included 185 comparison group students, so 25 students left the comparison group, calculated by subtracting 185 from 210. A is an incorrect answer. The numbers in this answer choice relate to the number of clusters, not individuals. B is also an incorrect answer. Using 250 in the denominator for the intervention group is incorrect because the 21 students in the classroom that left the study should be excluded. Knowledge Check 8. A study examined the effectiveness of a new reading curriculum by comparing a reading achievement outcome in five classrooms using a new reading curriculum and five classrooms using business-as-usual curriculum. The study authors used classroom-level data from all 10 classrooms to report means and standard deviations for the reading test at baseline and follow-up. The study reported baseline data for the 123 intervention group students and 108 comparison group students who completed the baseline test. Baseline differences for this sample were smaller than 0.05 standard deviations. The study reported outcome data based on 125 intervention group students and 91 comparison group students who completed the follow-up test. No information about the total number of students enrolled in the classrooms at baseline or follow-up is available. The study is reviewed under a protocol using the optimistic boundary for attrition and specifies that no joiners pose a risk of bias. 
True or false? The study satisfies WWC standards for evidence of effects on individuals. This statement is false. This study is a cluster QED that does not satisfy WWC standards for evidence of effects on individuals for two reasons. The study does not provide baseline data for the analytic sample of individuals used to assess outcomes, and the study did not provide individual level standard deviations. Which of the following is true? A. This study meets WWC group design standards with reservations because the study establishes that the sample was representative of the clusters at baseline and follow-up and establishes equivalence of clusters. B. This study meets WWC group design standards with reservations because the study establishes baseline equivalence of clusters. C. This study does not meet WWC group design standards because representativeness of the individuals within clusters is necessary and not demonstrated. The correct answer is C. Because this is a cluster QED that does not satisfy WWC standards for evidence of effects on individuals, reviewers must use steps 5 through 7 to review the study's evidence of effects on clusters. However, the study does not provide the enrollment data required to assess representativeness. Therefore, the study receives a rating of does not meet WWC group design standards. Choices A and B are incorrect. The study cannot meet WWC group design standards with reservations because it does not demonstrate equivalence of the individuals in the analytic sample. And the study does not demonstrate that the analytic sample is representative of the clusters. This concludes our review of Cluster Level Assignment, Module 8 of the WWC's Group Design Standards Training. Let's review what we learned in this module. We discussed how to identify an eligible cluster study and described how compositional changes can affect the rating of cluster RCTs. We also described the standards used to review cluster studies and how to apply the standards to these studies. Up next in the training series, Module 9 will discuss the study review guide. Just a few final reminders. You can access all the resources mentioned in this module through the WWC website, whatworks.ed.gov. Please note that the full slide deck for this module is available on the WWC website. This includes detailed responses to the knowledge check questions. To receive a certificate of completion for viewing these training modules, you must view the videos on the WWC website. Thank you for viewing the cluster level assignment module.